China's top lawmaking body has once more stamped its authority in Hong Kong. All 155 members voted in favor of a measure that effectively disqualifies the two young lawmakers at the center of this constitutional crisis. Officials say the duo's antics left them with no other option. They are trying to use the platform of legislation to call for Hong Kong independence. Among them, a few newly elected lawmakers who maliciously insult the nation. He added that separatist sentiment was a violation of the law. <laughs> there were frantic scenes as Hong Kong journalists scrambled for copies of the document containing the reasons for China's intervention. It's fifth since the former British colony was returned to China in 1997. At their swearing-in ceremony last month, Sixtus Lung and Yai Wai Ching unfurled banners calling for an independent Hong Kong. They also altered their oaths to include insults against China. For that, they'll not be allowed to retake their oaths. Before the handover, Britain and China signed a treaty designed to guarantee the city-state's autonomy. But that treaty may be starting to fray. On Sunday, police used pepper spray against supporters of the two local lawmakers. After Monday's ruling, more protests seem likely. One, one country, two system. It has been destroyed, smeared, taken apart over the past many years. And today, basically, they disregard the whole system. And effectively, the Communist Party are making laws for Hong Kong. It's rare for foreign journalists to be allowed into the great hall of the people. And this seven-page document is one of the reasons why we are here today. It outlines China's justification for the decision to disqualify the two Hong Kong lawmakers. It says their actions have threatened the national security, stability and unity of the People's Republic of China. And today China has drawn a line in the sand. This ruling is sensitive for another reason. A Hong Kong court has yet to complete its review of this case. But China's leaders have now sent a clear warning that their word on this matter is final. Adrian Brown, Al Jazeera, Beijing.